Okay. However, we can't start thinking of light as a, um, just as a pure particle, because there's other experiments that definitely show that it's a wave. Those are the other things that you're going to be watching the videos on, the interference and diffraction. Um, light ex exhibits interference. Well, then it must be a wave, because only waves would interfere with each other. That's why everything has to be explained in terms of frequency, because it does have wave characteristics and particle characteristics at the same time. And again, this shouldn't seem like common sense, because in ordinary life, there really isn't anything that we know of that has both wave and particle characteristics. We just have to uh, accept that things are different at the subatomic level. By the way, Planck's constant here, is this a big number or a small number? Very small, which means how much energy does each photon carry? A very small amount. Each photon carries a very small amount, which is the reason why the quantization is usually not noticed. Because this means that the, uh, the quanta are very, very small. It's like when we had that number line that I split up into very tiny segments. Well, if the segments are so small, it seems like it's continuous and not quantized. Well, because Planck's constant is so small, the individual quanta of energy are very small, and it's hard to realize that they're really quantized. Okay. Now, the basic equation here, then, is, well, So let's say we're shooting 15 electron volts per photon. Here the work function is 10 electron volts. What would be the maximum kinetic energy of the freed electrons? The most energy they could have when they leave is 5 electron volts. Let's say that we have an energy of 20 electron volts per photon. What's the maximum kinetic energy of the freed electrons? Right. This is that thing from the quantum, uh, from the photoelectric effect. Increasing the frequency gives you a higher kinetic energy per electron without changing the number of electrons. Let's say that the photons have 10 electron volts per photon. What would be the maximum kinetic energy per electron that's freed? Uh, yeah, so you can kind of imagine it's freed, but then it just sits there. It has, it's, it's so exhausted from getting free from the sample that it has no extra energy left over to go shooting away. I don't know if you could ever be exactly on this borderline, but the point is, if the energy is only slightly above 10 electron volts, then the electron will move away at a very, very slow pace. It's only just barely escaping. Now here's a trick question. What would happen if there were seven electron volts per photon? The electron would Yeah, so it doesn't even make sense to ask what the maximum kinetic energy per electron free would be, because there wouldn't be any electrons free. No electrons free. No matter what you do to the intensity. It doesn't matter, because the intensity would just change the number of seven electron volt photons, and none of them would be above the threshold over here. On the other hand, if we increase the intensity over here, that would give us more um, uh, uh, electrons free, but they would still have a maximum energy of 5 electron volts. And if we increase the intensity here, that would give us more electrons free, but they would still have a maximum energy of uh, kinetic energy of 10 electron volts. So the equation here is Yeah, feet. 
this is the symbol they use for the work function. So they use the symbol phi for the work function. Okay, and this is the formula you've been using all along. For example, if we shoot a 15 electron volt photon, it's going to use up 10 electron volts freeing um, the, ele uh, 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 the electron, and there'll be 5 electron volts left over. 15 minus 10 is 5. So really, uh, I didn't want to introduce this too soon because this should just be common sense now that we understand uh, the photoelectric effect. But this only applies if the energy of the photon is bigger than the threshold. You wouldn't apply this if the energy of the photon is less than the threshold. That would give you a nonsensical negative number. This tells you the maximum kinetic energy of the freed electrons, but it only applies if the energy is big enough to free some electrons. So that would be a good test question to try to trap people into using this when the energy of the photon is smaller than the work function. This only applies when the energy of the photon is bigger than the, uh, than the work function. All right, and how do we calculate the energy of the photons? So this might be the form in the book here. How do we find the energy of the photons? What's well, Planck's constant times the frequency of the photons? But again, rather than just plugging and chugging into this formula, it's better to think through the logic of what we're doing. So So let's say that we measure the maximum kinetic energy of the electrons is 3 electron volts, and we know that we're shooting photons with energies of 8 electron volts. What's the work function of that substance? Good. So that would be a common type of application here. That, uh, so that you don't just plug into the two right-hand terms here. It must be 5 electron volts. That's why when we subtract the 5, that's why the maximum energy left is going to be 3 over here. Okay, good. So let's take a look at page 613 in your textbook. 613? Right. If you look at uh, the table in the bottom right, it gives us the work functions for different substances. So of all those substances, which is the hardest to pry an electron out of? Uh, nickel. Yeah, because nickel has the biggest work function, 5.15 electron volts, and which is the easiest to pry the electrons out of? Uh, cesium. Yeah, cesium because, uh, well, maybe you're right, maybe cesium, I don't know. All right, so cesium because that has the lowest uh, work function, 2.14 electron volts. Let's say that we have a sample that's made out of potassium. Potassium.
All right, so let's do a, a sample problem. Let's say we had to figure out the minimum frequency photon that would free electrons from potassium. What are the units on that? Uh, yeah, and what are electron volts at unit four? What concept do they measure? Uh, or energy, yeah. right, energy, good. So it would take 2.3 joule, uh, well, no, 2.3 electron volts of work to free the electrons. Good. And we're trying to 